and Hulk Hogan body slams Andre the Giant in the middle of the squared circle, which is nowhere near the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Okay, sometimes you go over the top rope and you bang your head on the ring apron. Don't do that. That's when you feel like a big dope because they're the worst bumps you can be taking. It's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Sometimes you reach out for the hot tag and you go ahead and make your own comeback, Boba Hicks. That's when you should quit wrestling and you're better off rolling in thumbtacks. It's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. One more. Sometimes you're distracting the referee and the baby face has your wrestler pin, Chris Miwa. That's when it's something and something and you realize all the trouble you're in because it's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Now double claps. It's episode 105, Bob Squad. That means absolutely nothing. It's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. ba da ba da Whoa! Yay! I've been doing a bushwhacker thing at the top of these for a bunch. I don't know why that is. Uh, forgive me if you hear some background highway noise. I turned the fan off. I left the window a little bit open. It is very hot to record these for the next couple of months, so you just gotta bear with me. I do the best I can. I suffer for my art, Bob Squad. I suffer for my art. It is episode 105. As I record this, it is August 11th. It is Hulk Hogan's birthday. The man who slammed Andre the Giant and has been slamming Andre the Giant at the beginning of every opening for every WWE and NXT show for many years now. Uh, just so you know. How about that? It is Hulk Hogan's birthday. There you go. Fun fact. As I record this, by the time you hear it, actually in your time zone, is it is already no longer Hulk Hogan's birthday. So never mind. Uh, that is the end of the birthday of Hulk Hogan. He can slam Andre anywhere he wants, in the middle of the ring, at the hardest part of the ring. doesn't really matter. He can do it at the opening of the show, but now that it's done and now we have to move on, and where we move on to in the Hulu edition, the Hulu edition, the not limited enough commercial interruption, Hulu edition of WWE NXT. We move on. Now let me grab my notebook. Hold on. We have one of those recaps I love. Again, I love these. To uh, me and my, my sweat towel. Oh, yeah, I like that. Okay, much better. Let me turn my light on here. We have those recaps I love. Here's everything that's going on last week. Here's everything going on this week. And Ember Moon has not been cleared to a match. Ember Moon has not been cleared to wrestle a match I didn't know about. So, um, no skin off my back, I guess. She, uh, apparently she got hurt, uh, she was examined by the physicians, and they said she had too many gimmicks, and she, she hurt herself carrying all those gimmicks around. So that is unfortunate. Uh, she, was, she got up late at one night in the dark to go to the bathroom, and she tripped on one of her gimmicks and fell down. So many gimmicks. Not enough time. So Dakota Kai wrestles Sare, and I bet she was sorry she got kicked in the head by Dakota Kai and lost the match. Okay, I'm sorry. I couldn't think of a better joke for that. <laughs> I guess Dakota's sorry, not sorry. So Dakota Kai um, uh, gets into the ring and does this butt wiggle thing when she does like her hand point thing. And I'm gonna. The reason I bring it up is because uh, Adam Cole does the exact same thing later without his hand point. So Adam Cole and Dakota Kai do the same butt wiggle thing. So there's a so Dakota Kai comes in for a butt wiggle to uh, advertise her upcoming match against Raquel Gonzalez. Here's where I got confused. I thought Sarai and Dakota were wrestling in a number one contenders match, which are now called... Oh boy, let me... They're now called championship contenders matches on Raw anyway, which is confusing. Um, I may or may not know whose bad idea that was. Take a wild guess. Whose bad idea is everything in WWE Raw? <laughs> ah, I shouldn't have said that. Whatever. It'll be fine. Um, if it's on Raw and it's a bad idea, take an educated guess as to, as to who ultimately is in charge of everything. Come on. This isn't, this is, that's not news. Okay. Um, sorry, Dakota have a match in Dakota. 
I would have liked to have seen Dakota be an asshole. I'm going to nitpick this match, and I have a similar complaint for the main event later on. I would have liked to have seen Dakota be more of an asshole to Sare and make her sorry she signed up for that. <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing this, and I'm not even sorry. Okay, I know. Uh, so after the butt wiggle, she's not sorry, and uh, we see... Uh, so apparently the announcers, and I actually rewound it and to listen to this again, which I never do. The announcer said, hey, Dakota Kai, in the little window we see Raquel Gonzalez arriving to the arena, which would normally annoy me during a match, but this was related to this match, so I didn't mind at all. Um, and the announcer, who is not Wade Barrett or Beth Phoenix, who wasn't there, the other guy says, hey, she should be concerned, her opponent... Well, she doesn't know her opponent for uh, the takeover is coming uh, on her way to the arena. And I thought I thought this was a number one contenders match. And I think I was just wrong. So apparently it was just a match. But it was good to have Dakota get that win over Ember just before this. And Dakota did need, to, in my opinion, did need to wrestle on, on this show or next week's and beat somebody else up. And I think Sarai was a good choice. I don't think they're saving Sarai for anything special. Um... So Raquel Gonzalez arrives, uh, Dakota nails a big kick to the head, beats Sarai right in the middle of the ring, one, two, three. Another, uh, another point of confusion is that the announcer, well, I think this is just a mistake, the same announcer said Dakota Kai is going to have to deal with Raquel Gonzalez at TakeOver 35. Uh, no, she's not. TakeOver 35 happened already. Uh, TakeOver 36 is what he meant to say. That was just an error. I, I just want you to know I caught it. I just want you to know, Bob Squad, that I was listening. Um. Okay, so Raquel, and this is great, Raquel runs in, and the second Dakota sees Raquel, she ducks out, making us wait for the physicality. Now we're, we're, we want to see Raquel get her hands on Dakota and beat her ass and bump her around for, for turning on her and being a bad friend. We want to see that now. Um, and then Raquel picked up the microphone and said something in Spanish. I'm not going to tell you what she said. Um... And what's going to happen? Oh, then we recap uh, the Gargano, Dexter, Loomis, Lover, Lever thing. But before we get to the next segment, I have to pause this because I have laundry going. So I got to change it from the washer to the dryer. So you just stay where you are. And okie dokie, I have returned. And what happened is I finished an entire podcast and realized I wasn't recording the whole rest of that. So that was all wasted. I talked into the abyss. I, uh, I babbled into a microphone for absolutely no one, Bob Squad. But I, I did uh, finish. Um, I got like ten minutes left to my laundry's ready. Okay, so let's uh, let's bang this bad boy out. I'll try not to cheat you too much. We we recapped Gargano and, and Dexter Loomis, um, and I hung my shirts on a dryer. Uh, there's a few of my shirts that, that I they, they they wrinkle less if I dry them on a hanger, and a, a few others that I've uh, put them on like if I put them in a dryer that they don't get as wrinkled. I don't have an iron. Or an ironing board here, so I have to be very selective. But I took care of the situations. I just want you to know that. So everything's going to be fine. I just want you to know where I'm at spiritually, but, like, emotionally and mentally as well. So that's that's what we're doing. Oh, Dexter Loomis shows up at the front door of the Gargamel's house with dead flowers or black flowers. And I really wanted to hate this, and it made me chuckle because wrestling's dead anyway. And NXT is going to die soon, so let's just ride it out. And Gargano and Candice LeRae did a good job of pretending to be the parents of all these young superstars who are three or four years younger than them. Uh, Candice LeRae does a, a comical thing with Indy Hartwell about prophylactics or, or condoms. Uh, you know, it's like a, it's like an, it's like a, an ST the preventive device that you wear aware on, on your genitals there and you thrust and you have the intercourse and the fornication and then you get thrust around uh, resulting in climax for at least one of the two and in my experience at least one of the two people so you understand but you don't want unwanted pregnancies or sexually transmitted diseases you understand so Candace uh, Larray says hey what about protection and Indy says, oh, I'm a, I'm a former tag team champion. Look at these guns, and I don't need protection. And she misunderstood, and Candace just let it go. So I think the next logical step for the storyline, hear me out, is for Indy Harwell to become impregnated by Dexter Loomis. And maybe they can go to that sperm donor facility I had an interview with, and um, uh, I can be the receptionist. 
and everything will just work out swimmingly, like the sperm. They swim around. And Gargano grills Dexter Loomis, who says absolutely nothing about what are your intentions with Indy Hartwell. Like, basically, they were doing, like, an 80s sitcom, like it was an episode of Growing Pains. Like, they were doing every trope of the young teens going on a date and the parents being overprotective in different ways. And, of course, it ends with a very uh, sitcom-like scenario being set up. Gargamel and Candace decide we're going to spy on them on their date, and you know they're going to get caught. So they... Um, I tried to hate it, and they, they they sold they sold me on it. No one sold Pete Dunn on a pair of socks, because Pete Dunn shows up with no socks momentarily. Ilya Dragunov from the UK NXT is here. Good to see him, because we forgot about the... I forgot about the Walter-Ilya match, because they forgot about it. At least on Hulu, they stopped promoting it. Ilya cut a way better promo than I thought he was going to here. He was passionate. He doesn't say anything... Uh, really specific and unique, but he just is, you know, I believe him that he's fired up. He's not happy he lost the last one, and he's going to do everything he can to kick Walter's ass and take that championship. And I believe him. Really passionate, just an intense, charismatic, passionate guy. Too bad he's not big, so Vince hates him. And he done interrupts him with no socks and says, hey, I'm British, I got no socks. And they're going to wrestle a match later on tonight. We go back to the date. Ooh, there's a lot of us. I think this is the future of NXT, folks. Um, the Candice LeRae and Gargamel are spying on uh, Dexter and Indy, and they keep saying over after they talk to each other in a walkie-talkies until Indy catches Candice and says, this is over, over, or whatever. And we move on. Um, I breezed through it. Listen, there are 19 camera angles. Another reason I should hate all these segments. Uh, it's, it's bad. Um... But I think at this point, I think a lot of the talent, not just Gargamel and Candice LeRae, but I think AJ Styles does this. I think Morrison does it. I think New Day does it in the last year or so. I think it's so bad, they just say, fuck it. They just run with it and go, let's... If it's, we're gonna, if it's gonna be dumb, let's make it dumb, dumb. Which I, I, I can't blame them. William Regal is surrounded by a bunch of security guards and a guy on the right keeps wiping his nose with his hand. Why is he doing that? So he's got his snotty security guards spreading mucus and Delta variants everywhere. Adam Cole shows up uh, in a tank top. And he's cutting great promos. And Kyle O'Reilly Auto Parts. There's an O'Reilly Auto Parts. It's a popular chain here in America. Kyle O'Reilly shows up looking like a college kid who uh, is about to sit uh, hungover through Sociology 101. Kyle looks like he just ordered a Jack in a Box from Uber Eats and didn't leave a tip. Too personal. Kyle O'Reilly looks like he's about to break out an acoustic guitar at a party where everyone was already having pleasant conversations. Why does he look like a bum? He looks like a bum. And his promo was, was, was weak. He sounded like a, a wimpy guy who breaks out acoustic guitars. What's the matter? I know he's not a wimpy guy. Is that, I, I, if you can hear the highway noise, I'm sorry. I've been sweating in this room doing the same podcast twice, so you got to bear with me. Anyway, William Regal says, I'm British. The security guard is snotty. Uh, it'll be a two out of three falls match at TakeOver. Each of you pick a fall. Kyle says, I'm boring. I'll pick a regular match for the first one. And Cole says, I'm less boring. I'll pick a street fight. And William Regal says, I'm British. You'll wrestle in a steel cage. For the third fall, if there is a third fall, obviously there is. The only dick wiener of these matches is that, especially, they did this with Cole and Gargano two years ago. The thing is, first of all, a two to three falls match. We all know it's going three falls. So the second fall is always 100% predictable. So you might as well keep it short, in my opinion. Why does the second fall need to be... And if the third one's in a cage, I would say have a good long fall, a good long match for the first one. Have a couple of minute street fight, whatever. Get it, get it over with for the second one, and then just drop the cage. It's so, you know, whatever. But that's me. What the hell do I know? Some asshole in a hot apartment. Driving Uber Eats. Odyssey Jones defeats Trey Baxter. Uh, this match gets 17 million stars. Don't question the system. Odyssey, they're, they're both big. I mean, they're both baby faces, but Odyssey's big and Trey is, is really small. Odyssey bumps him around, but he doesn't heal on him. He doesn't treat him like an asshole, but he hits his moves and he pins him and yada yada. 
And Ozzy talks to a brunette lady. You don't hear me say that all the time. He talks to a brunette lady and says, Hey, I'm excited. I'm fired up. And I believed him. This was great. He only talked for 30-something seconds. But I believed everything he said. I believed that he was awake and alive and really wanted to win this thing. And he was fired up. And he was high-fiving people through the glass. They're just smacking the glass. And it was... Everyone was excited. He was excited. He's not quite the big man that Bronson Reed, who got, who got released, oh boy. He's not quite the big man Bronson Reed is. He's not quite the big man physically. Uh, doesn't move like Keith Lee either. But he moves still pretty good, and he's wide awake. And I like that about Odyssey Jim. So I hope he wins the whole thing. We go back to the date. Oh, dear. In true sitcom fashion, Gargano wears a fake mustache and pretends to be the waiter. I don't know what they did to the real waiter. I'm concerned about his his or her well-being. Server, excuse me. I'm not supposed to say waitress anymore. Everyone's a server. Or I don't really, I don't fucking know. Anyway, there's 58 cameras. Andy Hartwell just killed the whole business. Never mind the 58 camera angles and the bad wooden dialogue and the um, improbability and, and silliness of this whole entire a skit here. Andy Hartwell, uh, after a cake, accidentally goes into Dexter Loomis's face. Before she kisses Dexter Loomis, she puts her hand over the camera. Now, she sees the 51st camera, but not the first 50. Andy, you just, in that one motion, you just told us the whole segment was bullshit. <laughs> no, she didn't. She's like the 90th person to blame for all this bullshit. Probably not even that. Uh, then Wade Barrett said he didn't want to see any more X-rated footage, which is hilarious. Uh, Karrion Cross has a long package. Uh, Indy Harwell's breaking more fourth walls than the Kool-Aid Man. Hey! Karrion Cross has a huge long package. No wonder Scarlet sticks around. Him and Samoa Joe are going to have their big match. Pete Dunne! Maybe he's wearing socks, maybe he's not, but he's wearing his wrestling boots. As he wrestles Ilya Dragunov. A uh, pleasure to see Ilya on this NXT show. Uh, they have a great hard-hitting match. My only nitpick with it was the same as with Dakota and Sarah. Uh, if I'm tuning in at the lockup of Dunn and Ilya, I don't know who the heel is. And by the way, their wrestling was really hard to tell. Until Ilya is about to hit his... Ilya wiggles out of that bitter end. Dunn's finish a few times, which means Dunn's going to hit it. Um, and probably win a match, and he does. Um... But Ilya is about to hit his big running torpedo European uppercut. Did they just call it an uppercut there? Don't know. Uh, about to hit his big European uppercut. Uh, Walter's music, and Walter interrupts Ilya. Ilya's distracted, gets hit with the bitter end. One, two, three. Uh, well, uh, 18 million stars, by the way. Uh, don't question the system. Big surprise. Big surprise here that this would happen. Uh, I thought they were just going to have Ilya go over Dunn, with Dunn having not much going on. Um, and keep Ilya tough for the, the match with Walter. Mini stared down with Dunn and Walter, which makes sense, because they've wrestled a few, and Walter beat him for the thing, and, but Dunn kind of leaves. I thought they were eventually going to the three-way, and they still may. Or maybe they're just going to add Dunn and, the t and make it a three-way last minute, because they didn't have enough faith in their UK guys to be entertaining for this show. I don't know. That's still always possible. you got a week and a half to go. Could happen a day of. Walter hits his, uh, Ilya hits his thing on Walter, though, when Walter tries to bully him and holds up the belt, but he doesn't hold the belt up with one hand like he's, like, everyone else does all the time, so Ilya's fired. I don't know. I can see all these guys getting, I can see Ilya, Dunn, Walter, all getting fired on the same, and Keith Lee and by, the, by Vince McMahon and Nick Khan or whoever the fuck on the same day. So it was a good, a good enough episode. Less, a lot less wrestling for an NXT Hulu, which makes me worried about things to come. They had a ton of releases, one of which was Bronson Reed. Doesn't make a lot of sense. So I wasn't too, uh, so a little somber mood going into it, like uh, poor NXT. That kind of mood. Let me wipe my sweat with my sweat towel here. I don't know. I, I'm afraid this show, it, it's its looking like it's going to have more of Vince's paws in it, and it's going to be a more obvious developmental and SmackDown or Raw light more than ever. It's not looking good, but I don't know. I don't know. 
not looking good. Rumors of Adam Cole on his way out, which is really bad because she. Listen, there's plenty of great wrestlers on the show, and he's one of them, but you lose really your best talker. It's not good. It's not good. I know his, I don't know if his girlfriend, wife, fiance, I don't know. He's romantically connected to Rick Breaker on AEW, and I don't know everybody's business, what their status is. I have no idea, but whatever. I know she's there. Um, I mean, it makes me think, like, I keep saying whenever another big star goes to AEW, yeah, but how are they going to use him stupidly? Look at the big deal they made about Christian. They got Mark Henry and Big Show announcing, and they're, they're three times the size of anyone on the roster. It looks preposterous. It really does. No disrespect to those guys, but it just, it's just silly. Um, and are, are, are all these big stars, if, if it really, if CM Punk's really going, if Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan's going... Do they have their one match with Omega, and then Omega beats him, of course? Or then they tag together, and they, they lose to the Young Bucks, of course? And it's just the Omega Young Bucks promotion. Like that PWG or Pro Wrestling Gorilla Southern California crap that I used to hear so much about when I was briefly a Southern California indie wrestler. And the San Diego, uh, a new wave Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Champion for a little bit in 2010, if you need to know, who cares? So, you know, ah, it looks bad for pro wrestling guys because Peacock owns everything and doesn't care. Um, they don't even on the day of like what, what day was it? It was Money in the Bank Day. They didn't even have a, a main logo on Peacock. Like that, this is the big thing happening on the channel today live. They didn't care. They just want nerds to watch The Office. That's all they fucking want. And Law and Order S for you. That's they don't care that it's even on there. So there's not going to be any priority to maintaining any history of wrestling, which is all tied up in this library. Yeah, I'm really, I'm thinking, like, it's done. It's done, done. I see stand-up comedy dying with it at the same time. These are my two biggest endeavors slash failures. Like, it's all, like, my relevancy is going, I mean, maybe that's really what I'm mourning, really, is my relevancy just going away. And, uh... I mean, thankfully, I can still collect action figures and, and make movies for you guys. Um, but then what happens when it, when Masters of the Universe Origins line discontinues? It ain't going on that much longer. Or G.I. Joe Retro line, which just kind of weirdly chugs along. Or these new Transformers, which they're going to run out of. Hold on to them. Don't let them break. But, uh, and then make my stories. I'm making my Son Bob episode with Serpentor's Demise. Still on it. You're going to hear me say that for every week for a long time. I'm making that episode because it's long. It's going to be a two-parter. You know that already. Uh, I'm doing stand-up comedy on Saturday at a burlesque show, which is weird. It's like we're, I thought it was going to open. turns out I'm in the middle. Like, okay, we're just going to take a break from the sexiness and have Bob talk. I don't even know what burlesque means. Like, it's not stripping. There's not technically nudity, but there's sexy ladies dancing around, and there's singing and dancing and choreography and wild costumes of some sort. And then we take a break, and it's Bob jokes. <laughs> and then we just go back to that. Like, it's going to be madness. But there's two shows, and I'm getting paid, so whatever. Um, <laughs> it'll be interesting. I'll tell you all about I'll probably talk about it on one of the Beach Town episodes, which I hope we can record in the next couple of days. I'll tell you all about what's going on with me and the sperm bank. And uh, wrestling's dying, comedy's a uh, foot in a grave. So I uh, thank you very much, Bob Squad. It is what it is. I am what I am. Uh, I did my best, because keep in mind, everything from seven and a half minutes to this point, I've uh, said twice. So... <laughs> I did the very best I could, but it sure as hell beats falling over the top rope and banging my head on the hard as part of the ring. Ba -da -ba -da. Uh, 